goblet squat. The goblet squat should be used to progress you towards a more complex version of the squat, such as a back squat, front squat, or overhead squat, where the loads can get significantly heavier. In doing this, it's important that you guys spend enough time with the goblet squat to truly train your mobility and your motor unit pattern so that you are efficient with this movement before stepping into those harder versions of it because they will be even harder to gain progress in. If you do this right, you will not stop seeing progress. If you do this wrong, you run that risk of running into brick walls down the road. For men, what we want to accomplish with this goblet squat is about 60% of your body weight for a 20 rep max, going at about a three second lower, one second pause and explosive up for the entirety of the 20 reps, never pausing more than a second at any point in time to take breaths or break from the movement. For women, you're looking for 50% of your body weight instead of 60, but the same rule applies for the tempo. It looks like this. Every single rep, four 20 reps consistently. That is what we're looking for for success in the goblet squat. The standard of movement is at the top position, our hips are fully extended so that we're reaching this straight line, shoulder, hips, knees, ankles. I like to hold the kettlebell upside down so that my weights are right underneath that in support. You can also use a dumbbell for this, same thing. You don't hold to both heads of the dumbbell, you just hold one head, all right? From here, I can kind of keep it close to my chest if I need to, all right? Um, next point of performance is I want the hips and knees to break at the same time. I do not want an either or situation. I want both of them to break at the same time and I want my chest to stay as close to up as possible. The benefit of training a goblet squat is the weights in front of you, providing you a little bit of a counterbalance that should allow you to really explore the range of motion in your hip and keep your torso upright, which is what we're training for when we're looking to progress into the really complex lifts like Olympic lifting, should that be a goal of yours. Plus, we're looking to bias more the anterior chain in the squat than we are looking to bias the hamstrings, glutes, and lower back, because that's why we deadlift, all right? So this is gonna provide some balance between squatting and deadlifting throughout those hips, so that we have a nice healthy back, healthy hips, healthy knees, etc. cetera, all right? So when we train this, we're breaking at the hip at the same time. We're trying to keep our chest up. The full depth position is hip crease goes below the knee with a neutral spine. If you ever get to this point where you're feeling like you film yourself from the side or something and you've got a little bit of what's called a butt wink, one of the main causes of that could just be that you're breaking your hip with anterior pelvic tilt, which looks like this, where I arch my back to start the movement. As you might have seen, if I start with a big arch in my back, eventually my pelvis has to come into a neutral position. All right, so instead start with a neutral position, engage your abdomen, keep everything locked in as you break at the hip and knee at the same time for the full range of motion of that squat. Finally, weight distribution through the foot. We're looking for the weight to be distributed throughout the entire foot. That means toes are down, balls of your feet are down, we're rocking towards the outside of our foot and into our heel. We never want to bear weight kind of on the inside because it'll pull our knee in, it'll pull our hips into a different position. It becomes unfavorable and unsustainable way to train. It also is less powerful because it's not accessing the larger muscles in the lower body. So it's not about where the knees are so much as it is about where the weight really is and where the chest and the torso sits, all right? So a full depth goblet squat really comes down to keeping the weight towards the outsides of the feet, full foot weight distribution. I'm not rocking into my heels only. I'm also not rocking into my toes only, all right? Just full weight distribution the whole time, okay? So you know what success looks like in the goblet squat? Train for that success before you progress to the next level and you will see more level of progression faster and longer.